Supreme Court also joining us is uh, senior advocate uh, Satvik Verma. Uh, they're joining us live. Uh, Mr. Verma, let me come to you first. Uh, this question of uh, exposing the Supreme Court uh, to uh, public attention by way of uh, live streaming. Uh, I just want to get your first thoughts, uh, largely because for the public, uh, this has been uh, what happens when, within the four walls of the Supreme Court is largely a mystery. Uh, the common references, of course, uh, one goes to Bollywood to understand what goes on inside a courtroom proceeding, especially the Apex Court. What does this do, uh, uh, live streaming, uh, to that public understanding of how justice is rendered in the top court of the country? Uh, I believe uh, we're trying to connect again with uh, Mr. Varma. But uh, meanwhile, uh, Sanjay, if I may come to you, the same question. Uh, the public understanding of how justice is rendered, of course, uh, we go by what's popular in public domain. Uh, but what does this uh, decision by the Supreme Court, a live stream, do to a public's understanding of how justice really works in the top court of the land? Uh, Ashwith, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it is truly a historic day. Am I audible? Perfectly. Am I Listen. audible? Yes. So uh, it's truly a historic day. In fact, India today has beaten the United States because even the United States Supreme Court has still not agreed to live streaming of its proceedings. So therefore, this actually has been a historic day. As you know, three constitution benches of the, of the court number one of the Chief Justice, court number two of Justice Chandrachur, and court number three of Justice Sanjay Kishan Call have taken up different matters and uh, they were live streamed. And to answer your question, whether is much more needs to be done, of course, much more needs to be done. And, uh, but, but this is a beginning and a very significant beginning. And uh, I'm also very proud because my senior, Ms. Indira Jaising, was the one who actually uh, championed and fought this case, which you were talking about, where ultimately Justice Mishra had said that there should be live streaming. And finally, today is a day when uh, the public gets to see uh, history being made. We uh, are belong to a different era where we studied about the great cases uh, by reading books and which are a poor substitute to actual visual recording of what happens. Like, for example, I wish we had the video recording of the Keshwananda Bharati case where 13 judges of the, of the Indian Supreme Court uh, deliberated over 68 days and finally gave India the doctrine of basic structure. So indeed, it is a very, very proud day for all of us lawyers. If I can just ask a follow-up question, uh, as far as lawyers and judges are concerned, there was this long-standing apprehension uh, that perhaps the nature of the conversation will be diluted because it's being exposed uh, to the public domain, because the public is watching. Uh, so does that argument hold good anymore in the sense uh, the public attention, uh, sunlight is the best disinfectant? Is that the view, perhaps? Yes, uh, but you know, there has, to be a, there has to be a caveat, Ashmeth. You know, today we are in the age of a quick news, 24-hour news and 24-hour breaking news. And unfortunately, there's a tendency to convert courts also into a breaking news thing. And you have these legal portals and you have even TV channels reporting, uh, you know, minute-by-minute minute observations of judges in sensitive cases. For example, let's say the Maharashtra breaking of government or, or UAPA or Umar Khaled or things like that. Now, you must understand the in, India follows the British adversarial legal system where you have two parties and the judge also asks certain questions which are uncomfortable to both parties now when the judge asks questions it doesn't mean that the court has made up its mind the judge may often ask provocative questions now if you are going to carry it immediately and sensationalize it and start insulting and humiliating the judge then there is a problem and you know this might have a retarded retarding effect on the whole process we have to be open to understand that there is a judicial process yes the public gets to see it but remember that it takes five years of of legal training to be a lawyer it takes 10 years minimum to become a judge and to reach the supreme court it takes 25 years so these people the lawyers and judges know what they are doing and if a judge is asking a question which is which may seem provocative, which may seem, uh, uh, you know, I'm uh, using the term liberally, which may seem to be uh, controversial, obnoxious, that does not mean that this is the view of the court. The court is only soliciting the counterpoint. So, you know, you often the judges play what is called the devil's advocate. So the judge will give an extreme point, you know, you, you know, during the famous ADM Jabalpur case, uh, when the when the Supreme Court was considering the habeas corpus issue, whether 
uh, whether the whether Indira Gandhi's emergency sure. led to the suspension of the right to go to court and say end the unlawful detention. Then you have the court asking Niren De, who was the AG, that does it mean that if I shoot someone over here or someone shoots someone over here in, in front of us, we are powerless and we can't do something. So that was sure. a way of question being asked by the court, a provocative question being asked by the court to exactly so gauge... An interesting what question you're raising is. there. I think it assumes greater significance in the age of live tweeting and live uh, uh, messaging. Uh, but uh, Mr. Varma, we finally connected with you again. Uh, if I may come back to you, uh, the question here remains that uh, how does this change the public perception of justice uh, being rendered in the top court of the country? A big milestone here for the Indian Supreme Court. Mr. Varma. Thanks, Ashwin. Always a delight to be back on your show. Uh, <clears throat> I just hope that the fact that we got cut off at the start of the show is not uh, a reflection of what's likely to happen with uh, some of these live streamings. Uh, but I think, Ashwin, it, it's... Um, it, it's, it's a momentous day, not just for lawyers, but it's a momentous day for every citizen of our country. And I'll elaborate that because it's, you know, for a variety of reasons. Uh, I'm also uncomfortable with you repeatedly using, for good reason perhaps, the word exposing, because it's not really exposing the court, but really bringing to the citizens of our country and to all those sitting away from the capital city where the Supreme Court is situated, uh, you know, a, a really a, uh, you know, courtside view of what's happening within the court and how deliberations take place. Uh, I believe personally that it is really a momentous day uh, for a number of reasons. One, as you said, uh, it's going to bring about transparency. I think the public can observe. Two, I think it's going to be really significant for law students because, as Sean Joy mentioned, um, most of us during the time that we went to law school didn't have the privilege, but a lot of law students can dedicate, uh, you know, substantial amount of time to seeing some of this. Uh, I personally also feel that uh, the live streaming of cases is really going to take up many more notches, the level of advocacy that one sees. Of course, before the constitutional bench, some of the best advocates of our country argue, but I do believe that it's going to take up uh, the level of advocacy even more. Um, and I think it sure. will, in that same vein, help maintain a little bit of judicial discipline, uh, you know, or what transpires, the kind of sure. timing. Today we heard of how the Chief Justice was, uh, you know, politely nudging someone, saying, your time is up, let's move forward. And I think that's something that's very critical in our judicial system, we lawyers tend to ramble on and are uh, in love with our own voice. So I think that will also get controlled. But as Sanjoy mentioned, and I completely agree with him, while I do believe that the online portals like Bar and Bench, Live Law, have really had a great role to play in this momentous step, because it's actually, let's not forget, sure. it's these online portals that were starting this, that started this live tweeting. A lot of other companies, you know, or, or, or uh, other portals came in. They tried to copy the same thing, but the accuracy sure. was great. Uh, some of these portals are quoted even in decisions of the Supreme Court. And they've also had a great role to play sure. uh, in bringing us here. Um, now, I think there is a couple of negatives as well that we need to be careful about. Uh, throughout the lockdown, when court was being done online, we noticed that videos used to be taken from computers and they were circulated and sometimes they were even edited. So we need to try and create some discipline within ourselves uh, where we prevent this. And the, the last point, just after I said that, you know, lawyers tend to ramble on, I don't want to just keep going. Uh, I think there also needs to be this check uh, that this will be that the lawyers don't start now playing to the gallery. Because now when you know everyone's watching, sure. it's kind of like a bit of, you know, theatrics uh, and the whole country seeing you. So it's, it's a great, great step. It is truly a momentous day. Uh, and it's going to be an evolutionary process. Let me in fact build We're on that point that you're making, uh, Mr. Varma. Yes. You made an interesting point of uh, playing to the gallery. The question I want to ask is uh, that both judges as well as lawyers 
they are at the end of the day human and today we live in the age of social media you made references to a couple of online portals but of course uh, given that now the supreme court will be available to the public imagination uh, will also in fact be subjecting them uh, to a lot of public criticism uh, perhaps public humor uh, perhaps comments that are not perhaps in the best taste social media of course is a different beast altogether how then will this survive in the age of social media and active commentary by the public I think the active commentary provided that it's healthy is going to be healthy for the overall environment. You know, let us not forget the fundamental premise even of our contempt jurisdiction. Every time a big contempt case is brought about, people say, look, the court has got the thick skin. It's got the ability to prevent its majesty being brought down. So I think public commentary is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you may have noticed in the recent months, um, some of the newspapers have started a column today in court, and on any given day, they are between six and eight reporting of what's happened. Um, you know, it is a development. Sure. Uh, one talks to one's elders in the professions and those who've been around, you know, longer than I've been born, and you hear from them saying it didn't used to be like this. So, uh, Ashwin, really, it's going to be a balance. We're going to have to find what that balance is in due course. We've taken a step, it's a great step, and let's just celebrate the step, uh, welcoming the fact that we may need to fine tune this as we move forward. But, you know, sure. drawing public criticism and public talking about it is not necessarily a bad thing, sure. provided it's done with the degree of respect that our courts deserve.